Dieses Video aus den Reihen der syrischen Rebellen ist aus mehreren Gründen bemerkenswert. Der 25-Minuten-Streifen wurde Mitte Februar ins Internet gestellt, unter dem Titel Dokumentation der Standhaftigkeit der Verletzten in den belagerten Stadtvierteln. Wer das Paradebeispiel des standhaften Kriegshelden ist, wird spätestens ab Minute 9 des Films klar. Im Rollstuhl an die Front. Eine verstörende Inszenierung, Kriegspropaganda der Assad-Gegner. Doch das Video enthält eine weitere Botschaft in Richtung Deutschland. Denn der frisch amputierte Dschihadist heißt Hayan M., ist 38 Jahre alt und hat lange in Kassel gelebt. In dem Propagandavideo präsentiert M. Führerschein und Krankenkassenkarte und ruft dann als erster Aufständischer aus Syrien auf Deutsch zum Heiligen Krieg gegen das Assad-Regime auf. Fliegen nach Syrien. Wenn du nicht lernen, wenn du nach Syrien fliegen, kannst du hier kommen und Jihad machen. Und warum machst du das nicht? Im Anschluss wird es emotional. Hayan M. wird beim Skypen mit zwei Kindern mutmaßlich seinen eigenen gezeigt. Deutsche Ermittlungsbehörden gehen davon aus, dass sich wie Hayan M. rund ein Dutzend Salafisten aus Deutschland im türkisch-syrischen Grenzgebiet aufhalten und auf Seiten der Aufständischen im Bürgerkrieg bereit sind zu kämpfen. Terrorismusexperten besorgt das, denn damit drohe die Gefahr, dass irgendwann gut ausgebildete und kampferprobte Dschihadisten nach Europa zurückkehren und dort Anschläge verüben könnten. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, March 2013. 2013, I'm Darko. All right, I'm going to continue here. Uh, you just saw a video from Der Spiegel about uh, basically uh, Sunni Muslims from Germany fighting inside Syria and how they're coming across the Turkish border. Um, hopefully you remember this, not too long ago from March 11th, US-born former army vet known as the American fights alongside Al-Qaeda, so he kind of has a little Amish beard. Maybe he's even Canadian, but he's a U.S. trained soldier turned Muslim warrior who moves between American countries where the winds of the Arab Spring blow, fighting alongside jihadists and America hating terrorists while uh, celebrating his bloody exploits on YouTube videos. And then there's this, of course, uh, I'm not going to go through it, just to give you a background here as we move forward into the whole we uh, weapons of mass destruction or chemical weapons in the, inside Syria. So, Mossad, Blackwater, and CIA led operations in Homs. CIA, Mossad, and Blackwater agents are involved in military violence in the Homs district, and Arabs News Agency reported, and this was from March 7th of last year. So, just again, just showing you that most of these people that are inside there are not Syrians, they are foreigners. It says here, Al Nasra calls for jihad, river of death, Syrians protest demanding exit of Al Nasra. Activists take to the streets of rebel-held uh, Mayadeen in eastern Syria for the third straight day to demand that al-Nasra Front fighters leave town. Protests erupted after the Islamist al-Nasra Front set up religious councils in east of, yeah, east of the Dair Ezer province where Mayadeen is situated to administer affairs in the area. I just saw an article that said that uh, just last December um, the rebels tried to institute Sharia law, saying that it was a Sharia state in Aleppo. I guess it didn't last that long, though. al Nasr's goals extend beyond Syria. As the Syrian war intensifies, uh, this individual examines the reasons behind the rise of al-Qaeda affiliated al Nasra and argues that the battle for Syria is only one step in a wider regional strategy for this group. Speech indicates that the Free Syrian Army is being subsumed after having been the leading military entity in the Syrian revolution. The Free Syrian Army, which would be considered Syrians, a former, uh, basically, army and defectors, has been pushed to the sidelines compared to this Al-Qaeda-linked group. The city of uh, Ar Raqqa was conquered by Syrian rebels. What's remarkable is the conquests of the city fell to jihadist troops, not the Free Syrian Army. They had hardly any role in it. And hopefully you guys remember as well uh, these executions in Raqqa. It says, regime attacks Raqqa and rebels conduct executions. Videos posted online showed government workers and troops lying dead in the streets, gunshot wounds in their heads. One video shows three bodies who it is claimed were executed for being dogs of the military intelligence. 
Uh, Raqqa was also the location where uh, those bodies were found and were blamed on the Syrian government. They said that, and of course there's hard to verify from all the way over here, but that uh, they were dumped by the Assad uh, regime down the river from uh, whatever, Aleppo or somewhere, basically a government-held area, and um, floated down to this place, and then they, they scooped the bodies out. But uh, you look at the bodies, and from what people are saying, uh, these are these are people that are are uh, not alongside with the Free Syrian Army or the or the rebels or the terrorists, and it happened twice. It happened in early January, and then it just happened recently, a couple of weeks within the last week or two, and uh, most of them were civilians killed by these rebels. Syrian Army kills Al Nasra front commander. So it says the Syrian Army says it killed the commander, and hopefully you guys remember this too. I just covered it on the fifteenth. Uh, they raided the militant headquarters in the northern city of Aleppo, so they killed the commander, which is probably why they're getting desperate here because of this, too. Our uh, Syrian army inflicts heavy losses on foreign-backed militants. They say that they have inflicted heavy losses on the foreign-backed militants who are fighting against the government, and this was on the 16th, linked to al Nasra. There's also reports in the past week of um, these individuals or this group uh, bombing the palace, basically their stronghold, uh, but they said they wounded many terrorists in fighting, in the fighting in Damascus. So this sets the this sets the um, the background for what's coming, which is they're getting desperate. So uh, you know you've seen the stuff about Lebanon, 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 and how uh, Syria is attacking Lebanon. But you saw how the West said that uh, oh all of a sudden there's going to be there's going to be violence in Lebanon. So they brought violence to Lebanon. Syria denies hitting any target in Lebanon. They've slammed as false and completely baseless reports claiming that the Syrian warplanes have hit targets along with the border of Lebanon. It says here, for the first time since the start of the conflict in Syria, the government has acted on its warning of hitting back at armed groups hiding across the border in Lebanon. Syria's ambassador to Lebanon stressed recently that although his country seeks close ties with Lebanon, it cannot leave its own security unguarded. It says the letter added that though the Syrian forces have exercised self-restraint so far and have not yet struck at armed gangs inside Lebanese territory, the Syrian patience is not limitless. This article is from last year. Syria warns UN militants will use weapons of mass destruction against civilians. This is from December 8th, 2012. Syria tells the UN it would never use chemical weapons on its own people, warning that terrorist groups may resort to such weapons on the ongoing turmoil in the country. So they said after having gained control of a toxic chlorine factory. Interesting, because that's what they were smelling, right? Chlorine, those uh, civilians that were uh, basically killed. U uh, U.S. doubts report of chemical weapons attack in Syria. So here we go, guys. Here goes the mind trip. Or the International groups also doubt accusations. The Syrian government rebels are trading blame today after what they saw. What they say was chemical weapons missile attack in Aleppo, an attack that killed 25 people. So they called them chemical rockets. The Bush, or the Bush, same thing, right? The Obama administration says they have seen no immediate evidence that they use any chemical weapons, including the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, says there's no independent confirmation. So this is just, this just came out yesterday, 19th. Now look at, uh, after what Syria does, Syria asked United Nations, again, to investigate the use of chemical weapons used by the militants. They did this before as well. Syria has asked for independent investigation into the use of the chemical weapons by the militants. Okay, so says here, oh, the Syrian government, if it has such weapons, will never use against its own population. All right, so we already knew that. Iran summons Swiss envoy over militants' use of weapons of mass destruction in Syria. The Islamic Republic of Iran is frequently warned against such crimes. It strongly urges the U.S. government to prevent chemical weapons from falling into the hands of the Syrian rebels. So, remember this article. U.S. doubts reports of chemical weapons attack in Syria from March 19th. House Intelligence chief. I think Syria used chemical weapons. Assad blames rebel rebels amid much confusion. So, but it goes on here and it says that Mike Rogers uh, told CNN he thinks there's a high probability that the Syrian government did so. His counterpart Diane Diane Feinstein, who just lost in the gun control grab, says she agrees. So I do agree with this. There's, the probabilities are very high that they're going into some very dark times. They think the White House needs to be prepared. Well, it is dark times. Like I said, they're getting desperate. And they're not getting the regime change that they want. So they'll just start killing more civilians. And it, with a gun to the back of his head in Israel, Obama warned Syria on chemical weapons. Obama said the U.S. is investigating the claims and warned 
that Assad will be held accountable if he employed them. Now, if the terrorists did that, well, they won't be accountable, right? He's instructed the teams to find out precisely where, whether this red line was crossed. He added that he was de uh, deeply skeptical of the Assad regime's claims that it was the rebels who used the chemical weapons. We keep seeing this. McCain and Graham on Syria. Obama's red line has been crossed, so it's time to take action. What do they mean by that? Graham calls for boots on the ground. This is McCain and Graham calling for boots on the ground in Syria. This is what they want. They do this, they, they carry this out, and then they say, oh, something must be done. So, that, so they get their regime change quicker even. But the funny part is, is, is that I already showed you that there's already boots on the ground. Where they want to call them jihadists or black ops, they're there. Mercenaries, right? NATO nurturing Syria contingency plan, we already talked about this, says top U.S. commander. NATO forces are focused on a wide range of operations, including drone strikes in Syria. And this also said they're monitoring the Syrian rebels. Obama's trip to Israel on Iraq war anniversary sends a message as time his trip to Tel Aviv to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq to send the message that America is there to do Israel's bidding, says an American author and journalist, Mark Glenn, of the Crescent and Cross Solidarity Movement. The first thing that we have to note is that Obama timed his trip to coincide with the 10-year anniversary of America invading and destroying Iraq for Israel's benefit. So he says, since the invasion, the U.S. has done many things on behalf of Israel. Besides the destruction of Iraq, we have the destruction of Afghanistan, the destruction of Libya, and what we see taking place in Syria right now. And of course, the United States is doing all this for Israel's benefit. Obama vowed that America's alliance with Israel is eternal and that their uh, bond is unbreakable. The overall message is that America has done exactly what she has been commissioned to do by the neocons and by these organized Zionist interests. So we keep here in red line. Remember this from September of 2012. Israeli, uh, basically, Nantiani sets red line over nuclear Iran. This is where he made that stupid little, basically, uh, kindergarten level uh, uh, anagram or diagram. Ultimatum is the only way to peacefully prevent Tehran from requiring nuclear weapons, the red line. That came from them. So one thing that was pointed out by Morris and Press TV was that uh, Iran's going through um, their little um, springtime celebration or Persian New Year. So a lot of people are going to be, uh, it's kind of like going to be like a Pearl Harbor Sunday situation, good time for an attack. And, you know, where's Obama? Well, Obama is surrounded by his handlers. So not a good place to be if you're the president. Then this just came in, uh, Assad pays homage to teachers, students killed by Syrian militants. So he's with the families of teachers and students killed by foreign-backed militants in Syria during a surprise visit to the educational center in Damascus on the 20th. He said, today Syria as a whole is wounded. There is no one that didn't lose one of his or her relatives, a brother, father, or mother, but all this wouldn't equal the loss of a son. Nevertheless, what happens to us could make us weak and the battle is a battle of will and steadfastness. He said that Syria will, will remain strong in the face of ignorance by following the path of the teachers and martyrs who lost their lives during the country's unrest that began in March of 2011. Many people, including large numbers of security personnel, have been killed in the violence and actually this explosion, which would make sense, no sense why we unleash chemical weapons and blow up his own personnel, uh, kind of like why would they set off bombs in front of schools and blow up children? And lastly, you have to remember Russia, and that's what we'll get into in the next video with Cyprus. There's a, Russia is the big player here, and uh, you know this could eventually get linked back to Russia, like we talked about with the leaked emails. And what's going on with uh, Cyprus right now with all the bank tax is about Russia. The sanctions on North Korea are kind of about Russia. The missile silos in Romania and Poland are about Russia, and uh, missiles against North Korea and Alaska are about Russia. Thank you.